today we find ourselves on this piece of land, an island, quite simply known as the island. As you can, you can see, it stretches uh, all the way over there, and quite the way over there. Now, this place is pretty much low-lying, has a bit of vegetation on it, and is home to many uh, seabirds. They do tend to nest there, so we're going to be uh, treading lightly and making sure we don't encroach upon those. T tends to be, uh, this time of year, they're not laying, so we shouldn't be encountering any problems. There's the boat, which we uh, managed to row across from all the way over there. Not too long of a trip. Certainly not as long as the uh, trip to that island all the way over there. If I can even get in shot. There it is, there it is. So that, that, one's, that one's the uh, the mighty expedition. This one's probably a quarter of that. Um, but yeah, let's, let's go and have a look around here. Now this island, unlike most of the estuary, has a ton of sand. It's, a, it's mainly built upon sand deposits, unlike most of what you find in the estuary, which is, which is primarily mud. So it's about this point in the harbour where things change from mud to sand. And as you can see, if you put your foot down in there, it's not really all that uh, tightly packed together, so it's, it's quite sinky, quite spongy. Um, yeah, the tides are pretty high right now, as you can see. Yeah, the water's actually gone up above the plant line, which is kind of, uh, kind of unnatural. You know, I don't think that grass does all that well completely submerged underwater. As you can see, it must do fairly well to live so close to salt water, but I'm pretty sure it's not supposed to be submerged. I could be wrong though. We have a, uh, we have some more mangrove plantation in here. This is relatively new, this old spot. So this little uh, inlet here is probably about two years old now. It's been formed uh, over that time. And yeah, once things tend to entrench themselves around here, they uh, they stick around for a bit until the uh, the morphology of the island changes yet again. All right, last time I was here, there was a grand total of two of these birds, which are quite rare in New Zealand. As you can see, their number has increased uh, a fair amount. They're spoonbills. And yes, their bills look like spoons, hence the name. There we go, we've got a whole flock of them. So in less than a year, because last time I came here was March, less than a year, they've, uh, they've multiplied in number quite drastically, which is quite incredible to see. Because all the years before that, we'd never seen a single one around here. And two popped up, and then, yeah, look what we have now. A whole family of spoonbill. There used to be a beach here. And I mean, last time I was here, six months ago, there was a beach right here. Now we have that much land before it hits the, uh, before it's the trees and plants. There used to be a good five to ten meters of sand exposed to high tide. There used to be a, a peninsula, well not really a peninsula, a point out there which extended a fair way out. That was exposed to high tide which has completely been uh, wiped off the face of the planet. Yeah, this is probably the highest the water has ever reached the island in probably decades. Last time it did anything like this was uh, probably during some of the biggest storms back in the 50s and 60s, I do believe. I could be wrong. There have been a couple of storms over time which have temporarily raised the levels and pounded upon the, uh, the island itself, but nothing quite like this, where it's been uh, this high during a normal, normal high tide. Look, there are people out there fishing. Look at all the fishermen, and there's a volcano. If it's going to focus for me, which it doesn't look like it's going to. There we go. That is White Island belching away. So there is an active volcano just all the way out there at sea. I don't know if it's due to erupt, but the recent tectonic activity 
I wouldn't put it past it for it to have a, have a bit of a blowout sooner or later. So yeah, now we've reached the uh, northern side of the island, which is obviously the most exposed side due to the fact that, you know, waves and stuff can come in straight through the harbour mouth and pummel this island. The rest of the harbour tends to be rather well sheltered. As you can see, there's a Hopi over there. I think you might be able to see Whale Island in the background. Where is it? Is it going to show for me? There it is. See that, that, that strange hump? That's an island. Whale Island. Shaped because it looks like something. I don't know quite what. Maybe one day I'll find out. And yeah, there you have it. The, the forces of nature in the ocean and, dare I say it, global warming at hand for all of us to see. This island is uh, being eaten away day by day. Um, there, there could be a slight change in anything. You know, water levels, current strengths, current directions, wind speeds, anything can uh, quickly change the uh, beaches for them to start reclaiming the sand. And it's happened before, but when it always happens like this, you gotta be a bit worried. As you can see, the tides have reached right up onto the bank there. Kind of a scary thought. I mean, if we lose this island, and there's nothing really protecting uh, our batch from the, from the true force of the ocean. And here we have even further evidence of uh, how it's all changed. These are trees. They are dead. They are in the water. This is not where this type of tree should usually be. Yet here it is. So you can see how far the uh, land used to extend. If you look at it, that, uh, that tree out there. And I'm sitting all the way back here. And the waves are, uh, are breaking at this point. So you can see how much land the island has actually lost over the last few years. So look at these guys, these are all dead as can be, rotting now. There's no way this species of tree can survive in salt water. But as you can see it makes quite a neat uh, little, little area. But then again it's all full of death and uh, decaying plant matter. Quite sad when you think about it. Now these little guys are called oyster catchers. And where's the other one gone? I have lost them. There he is. So these guys are quite common around the batch and they are specifically designed to uh, tunnel into the mud and uh, eat a variety of shellfish, worms, and other bits and pieces. Crabs as well, they're not really too fussy. But yeah, those long, sharp, pointed beaks are pretty much perfect for what they want to do. Where did, where did the other one go? Where is he, where is he, where is he? There he is. Now they tend to uh, mate up into pairs. So yeah, all these oyster catchers are now pairing up. I think they pair for life. I'm not, I'm not too sure about that, don't quote me on that, but they might pair for life. And uh, in about a month or two's time, they'll um, be laying eggs and uh, raising a couple of baby oyster catchers. But for now, they've just uh, paired up and uh, are pretty much just enjoying the sun. Uh, yeah, th there's another variety of oyster catcher around here called the pied oyster catcher, which are a slightly smaller variant with white on their chest, but you usually don't find them around here. The, uh, oh, I've lost them. The black ones tend to be more dominant and aggressive, which leaves the uh, pied ones relegated to the... Uh, the more reclusive parts of the harbour. And another thing to note is that during breeding and nesting season these guys become extremely aggressive. Usually they'll fly away when you get too close and they'll um, just go and land on another part of the beach and won't, won't bother you too much. But if they've got nests to protect and uh, babies to defend, these guys won't give a shit and will actually come after you. And those beaks could potentially hurt. Haven't been, you know, picked by one before but I've come close a few times. But yeah, that's the oyster catcher. One of the uh, 
amazing bird species found upon this estuary. So here we are, we're about to turn over to the other side of the island. As you can see, we have the white, clean, pristine beaches of the, uh, the northern face. The one that points directly out to the ocean. The Great Pacific Ocean, Myers all the way out there, and White Island, the active volcano. And we're going to be turning over and trudging through these, uh, these tiny, tiny dunes onto the other side of the island, the southern face. Where you'll notice quite a drastic change in how the uh, island appears. And here we go, we've just crossed the entire island, that took about 10 seconds, my feet are burning because of that sand. <sighs> now it's feeling better. And here we are, this is the southern side of the island, as you can see it's a whole lot different. This is the one that faces out onto the estuary, and the, uh, and the side where our batch is located, it's all the way over, over yonder, there it is. And this is what it looks like. It's completely different due to the uh, due to the mud and the fact that there are no uh, waves or great currents really battering it. it. Has a bit more of a chance to be quieter, settled down. Allows the mangroves a chance to grow. All these reeds. And yeah, basically, it's an island of two polar halves, which is something you don't usually see. All separated by what is literally a uh, a 10 to 15 second walk. So there's the other side. And here is the other side. I, I'm, I'm, yeah, this island is incredibly thin. And I thought I'd just point out to you how, how drastically different it is. So there you have it. There are both sides of the island. Now I have to head back to the boat, which I should be doing right now. But this is rather peaceful, isn't it? Anywho, tell you all. And we have made it back. There's the boat over there. So we've just done a circuit of half the island. The good half, I should say. The interesting half. The other half is just nothing of note. It's pretty much the exact the same as the uh, initial half. But yeah, there you go. Hopefully you've uh, seen a bit more of the uh, ever-changing nature of this uh, block of land and how it protects the, the batch and the estuary from getting battered by whatever currents and waves come in from the ocean. As you can see, the tide's even coming a bit more. And yeah, now we're gonna now we're gonna row on back home. It's gonna be fun. Hopefully, I can be a passenger this time and not have to row everyone over because that was tiring. I want to say that. I'm gonna be quiet about that. Anyways, thank you guys for watching. I'll be back. <laughs>